Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be talking about Luminar Neo, which is a software application that I have not covered in a while. They have some new updates that are coming in their fall update package, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to share some of these with you today. If you're not familiar with Luminar Neo, it is an image editing application that has a really interesting set of tools that allow you to do some really powerful things very easily and very quickly when you're editing your images. And one of the new features that I want to show you that's coming in their fall update today is one called Light Depth. So to give you an idea about what what we're talking about. I'm going to use this image as an example. Now, one of the things in photography that we deal with is we have a three-dimensional world that we represent in a two-dimensional space. In other words, a photograph is flat. We have height and then we have width. Depth is implied and we use things like perspective, scale, even depth of field to suggest that depth in the photograph. And so one of the things that makes this tricky is when you're trying to isolate certain areas in the photograph that you want to, let's say, relight, uh, this becomes very difficult because depth doesn't actually exist in the photograph. Photograph. Well, one of the things they have in here that is really cool is this new feature called Light Depth. And so I want to show this to you. If we go over to the Edit menu here, you're going to see this down in the Creative set here. And you're going to see it's the first one. It's called Light Depth. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this so you can see what this does. I'm going to go ahead and just bump the amount up, and this will turn it on. And you can see that we now have a three-dimensional field. You see light across the middle of the street uh, in this image. And if I go over to the Tool Palette here, I can actually control where this is. And and you can kind of start to see buildings pop up in the background as I move this. It is depth aware. And what is going on under the hood is Luminar is actually creating what we call a depth map. And so it knows where objects are in relationship to one another in the picture. And we can actually change the lighting depending on location of things in that image. And so this image is pretty easy because you can see it's just a street. And if I move it into the front, move it to the back, it's kind of like we've got a street light. I can also change how broad I want that light to be. I can uh, move this slider here and it'll make it wider or I can make it more narrow. And we can also change the softness and then we have some more controls on here. There's warmth and under advanced settings, you can actually control the brightness in the foreground as well as the background. So brightness near, brightness far and the color temperature for both of those as well. So this image is pretty easy because there's not a lot of objects in this image, but let's look at another one. You can start to see where the power of this really starts to come out. So this image is some flowers that are on my front porch. It is underexposed because the sun is in the background, but this is a really cool way to show you what's going on here. We'll select light depth. I'm going to go ahead and turn the amount up. And you can see where those flowers come up in the depth map here. And as I move forward to back, you're going to see this lighting actually the sidewalk back there. But if I bring it up front, you can see how it starts to handle the flowers in the front. This is very cool. I can just kind of get that where I want it. I can change the amount. Maybe I want to soften that up a little bit so it's a little more three dimensional looking and it's starting to look pretty good. We can also warm that up too since this is golden hour and I have an interesting image here. So I'm going to use a little before and after. So here's before and here's after. And you can see that this is really powerful in terms of changing how we're perceiving light in those three dimensions. I'll give you another example. This is an image that I shot at a dance workshop earlier this year in New York City. The lighting is a little bit flat on here. So what I want to do is bring some more drama into this. And I'm going to use light depth to do that. So we'll go ahead and select it. I will go ahead and put the amount up. And I will say like with any other slider that you're dealing with in Luminar Neo, you can go too far. So I usually bring it up higher than I think it needs to be. And then I will bring Bring it back just so it's a little more realistic looking. So maybe I want the highlight to be right here on this guy's shoulders and her on the front. Let's bring the softness up a little bit and we can increase the uh, area here. Maybe decrease it a little bit. And here's a quick before and then after. And maybe I want to take the background and dial that back. So brightness far, I'm going to turn down even more. And brightness near, we can turn that up or down. And let's see, before and after. Here's before, here's after, before after and let's bring that down a little bit it's a little too much but there we go and so i have something that works really well the other thing that you can do is you can actually cut and paste your edits if i right click on the image i can go down to adjustments and what i can do is i can copy these adjustments and then i can paste these to other images and so this works really well if you have a bunch of images that you're trying to do in batch everything is non-destructive and you can go in and fine tune each individual image and tweak to your heart's content this is free for all luminar users it is coming in the fall update and it is quite awesome. I'll show you one more. This image is underexposed. I want to bring some lighting into it. So I'm going to go ahead and select light depth and let's just bring that up a little bit. And you can see that it sure does. It brings up um, uh, basically like we've got a light in front of behind these dancers here. So I can change where that is. I can bring it up and I can actually light the dancers in the front. This looks pretty good. Bring my mount up a little bit. Let's soften that up. And that's starting to look really good. You've got a lot of options here too. If I decide that I want that to be further back 
and I want it to light up what's in the mirror. I can certainly do it there. You can see me in the mirror as well. But uh, anyway, it's very cool. And if I don't want that, I can bring it up so less attention is back there. But this allows me to control the lighting in a three dimensional space in a two dimensional image. It is very cool. So another new feature I want to talk about is called restoration. So as a photographer, and I'm sure you can relate, I have friends and family that will come to me with old scratched up images sometimes and they'll say, can you scan this and clean it up for me? And for those of you who have ever tried to do this, in the old days, this took hours and hours of time if you could even get it realistic looking. Well, restoration is using the power of AI and you can actually take your old scans and put them in here and you can do things like colorize them. You can clean up scratches. It's very cool. I'm going to show you how this works. So I'm going to take this first image here. This is actually an image of my dad. He's uh, the kid on the uh, on the right hand side and my grandfather who was in the military, served in the Korean War, and they lived on the island of Guam at one point. And this is a Japanese submarine that actually washed up in 1944 before the end of the war that they're standing in front of. So I want to do some restoration on this. So this is actually accessible from the catalog here. And if you look at the tools in the catalog towards the bottom, enhancement tools, it's under upscale. You're going to see restoration. So I'm going to open this up and it's going to say drag a photo here to start. So I'm going to take that photo, just drag it here. And you have three simple options here. I can just do scratches or I can actually colorize it or we can go into full, which is going to use AI to actually really try to enhance the image. On this one, let's just do color right now because it's not in terrible shape, but I've never seen a colorized version of this image. So what I'm going to do is click restore and it's simply going to think about it for a little while. And depending on your connection and the speed of your computer, and we have a result and this looks pretty good. Um, I'm actually kind of impressed with this and it's easy to use. I mean, literally, it's just you've got three options and you just let Luminar do its thing. This type of thing would have taken a long time to do back in the day. And now we can just do it in a couple clicks. I'll show you another example here. If we go to my folder here, this is an image. I love this. And this is my grandmother, actually. And this was uh, she was born in 1911. So this is a very early photograph. My parents have always had this scan. This is a portrait that her parents had had done of her when she was a little girl. And the version that I have is not that great. So what I want to do is let's go ahead and run a restore on here. I'm going to drag to start. Let's go ahead and say restore. It's going to take just a second. And you'll note there is a folder called restoration. So it groups those in there automatically. Of course, you can move this and organize it however you want. But we now have a really pretty good colorized version of this. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. The only thing that I would be a little bit critical of is the skin tones are a little warm, but we do have access to all of our editing tools within Luminar Neo. So I'm going to go in and actually play with that a little bit. Let's go into edit and I can go down here and let's mess with the toning just a little bit. Uh, it's a little warm on the skin tones and in the background. So maybe what I'll do is put my saturation up on my highlights, cool those down a little bit and let's do the same with the shadows. And uh, yeah, now I have something I'm a little happier with. Let's bring the saturation down there, maybe the amount and maybe the amount on the highlights as well. So the other thing I could do is we can actually run light depth on here too and see what it does. It'll create an image map. Uh, this one's actually pretty simple, but I can, uh, let's see what it does when I move this around. I can bring it up front so the light's just on her hands. Let's bring it down a little bit. It looks pretty good. Bring the softness up, bring it up, bring that a little more shallow, bring it up a little bit more. And that's starting to look pretty good. This is actually very interesting. Of course, you can do before and after on all these things. I'm going to bring the brightness far down so we can darken that background a little bit. And that's starting to look pretty good. So you get really good results really easily. I want to show you one more that was particularly impressive to me. OK, so this is an image that uh, my neighbor actually brought over. It's actually an image of his father, and he just had this as a little print. It is extremely washed out. This is his father and his dad's friend, and they're holding up fish that they've been uh, fishing. And so what was interesting is I did a big scan of this. Uh, let's go back out, and I'm going to drag and drop that over here. Let's just do scratches first, and I'm going to hit Restore. Take just a second. I wanted to use this as an example because this is an image that is severely damaged. And here we go. Let's blow that up and you can see it cleaned it up pretty good. I mean, the highlights that are blown in the front are still blown, but it took all the scratches out. It brought all the detail back into their faces. Just to compare the two, this is the original image and you can see how damaged it is. And then we can go in and see what it looks like black and white. One other example I want to share with you. So a lot of times you think you need a really nice scan to do something like this. This is an image I shot with my iPhone. So my neighbor's wall over here, this is an image of a garage, but it's basically just got such a color cast. It turned to purple. I ran this through restoration just to give me a good black and white. And sure enough, there it is. So you don't really even need a great scan of these to make it happen. Uh, it's very impressive. So the next two features I want to talk about that are coming to Luminar our Neo deal with this concept that Skylum refer to as spaces. And so the first one we'll talk about are private spaces. 
Private spaces are essentially a way of syncing up Luminar on the desktop to Luminar on your phone and vice versa. And so what it's going to use is the cloud to do this, but it allows you to take images on your phone and easily import them into Luminar Neo, which is very cool. It will sync up to the desktop and any edits that you do will automatically sync as well. And so this is really cool. So if I've been on a trip, I've taken a bunch of images and I know I'm going to be on a flight, let's say, and I'm going to be offline for a while and I want to do some image editing. I can do all that in the app. And then when I get back to the studio, I can have everything sync up. And this is really pretty cool because it saves you a lot of time trying to figure out how you're going to transfer photos and keep your edits intact. And if you have not used Luminar Neo on the mobile version, I would highly suggest you do so. It is very awesome. I love the interface on here. It makes image editing a lot of fun and is very interesting, very different, and at the same time, very intuitive. And of course, if we have private spaces for syncing the catalog, you probably guessed we also now have public spaces. And this is a great feature because it's an awesome way to be able to quickly share images with people. You've probably been in this situation. You've been photographing an event. Maybe you go home for the holidays, you're photographing family, and you want a quick way to be able to share images with everybody. And if you're like me, I don't want to try to text 60 images to my entire family that's not really efficient or cool to do either one. But uh, what I want is a really quick way to get them online so I can send somebody a link. I'll show you this real quick because it is awesome. So I'm on the desktop right now and let's say I want to grab some images here. I'm going to um, shift click to select them all. I'm going to go up under export and we can say publish to space. I'm going to say new space and we'll call this ballet. And uh, it's through my ballet images. One of the things that I can do here is I can actually click and drag to reorder them. So if you want to change the order, you can do that here. And then when I'm ready, I'm just going to go ahead and say click publish. It's going to take a couple minutes. Then it gives you the link with a couple options. I can share this with people. I can just cut and paste the link. I can open it in a browser. Anyway, this is a great way to just be able to send a bunch of images for people to look at or review. And you don't have to manage cloud storage. That's not really what this is. This is just an easy way of sharing stuff. So those are the big new features coming to Luminar Neo. There's some other stuff as well, including performance boosts for various technologies that the software uses, and obviously raw support for newer camera models. And if you've never checked out Luminar Neo, I highly recommend you do so. They've got a Black Friday sale right now, which is a chance to save some money. And I think that it's really amazing how far Skylum has come with this application. I've watched this over the years, and it has turned into a very powerful image editor with some really unique approaches to how we edit images. Not just that, but it makes everything easier easy and intuitive. And I think that is one of the most important things with any software. Anyway, I would love to hear what you guys think. So feel free to drop me a comment below. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.